Hello, my name is Jason and welcome to another Best Binocular Reviews Binocular Review. And today we're going to be taking a look at mostly the external features as well as some of the accessories for the super interesting Alpen Teton 10x42 binocular. And we're going to start right now. As you would expect, both the 8x42 and 10x42 Alpen Teton binoculars use exactly the same chassis and many of the outer parts used are also exactly the same and thus this part of the review will apply equally to both. So first thing you'll notice that this Alpen binocular looks and feels quite typical for a modern roof prism binocular. However, due to the particular shape of the eight prisms that they have used inside them, it has resulted in an instrument that is a little bit larger than most 10x42 binoculars. But I have to say this difference is less pronounced than other Aves that I have tested in the past. The exterior rubber coating used on these Alpen binoculars is relatively hard and not quite as thick as used by some. This results in a good looking finish and it has a nice tight fit onto the chassis underneath. Softer, thicker rubbers can sometimes move or slide about on the chassis if not glued on correctly but they do have the advantage of offering a little more impact protection as well as a higher grip level. Alpen has countered this last issue somewhat by adding a diamond texture onto the sides of the barrels, which does help, but even so, you would never describe these bins as having a very high grip exterior. The underside of the body doesn't have any thumb and dents, which is no biggie, but they can be somewhat comforting and when placed correctly, can subconsciously just encourage you to hold onto the binoculars in the correct way and at the balancing point, and thus enable you to get the steadiest views possible. A hidden feature, but a definite sign of quality, is the use of a chassis made from magnesium alloy, and not a polycarbonate plastic one that I see being used more and more often these days. A good metal chassis has the potential to be more robust, Please note this is not always the case and it does depend on the actual design and the exact materials used. But even so, magnesium also has an excellent resistance to temperature related expansion and contraction and thus any misalignment of the optics due to extreme temperatures is minimized. Measuring about 4.5 cm across, the bridge is pretty wide for a top hinge binocular design. And being made from metal, I have no concerns regarding its overall strength. The hinge itself opens and closes with a good level of resistance and thus it means it is not too difficult to do but at the same time it will remain at your desired setting. Speaking of which, I measured the IPD or intrapapillary distance to range on these binoculars between about 6cm up to a maximum of 8cm which for a 42mm roof prism binocular is pretty much standard. These Alpen Teton binoculars are tripod adaptable which means they are very easy to attach to a tripod, monopod or something similar using an ordinary tripod adapter. To do this, you simply unscrew the dust cap located on the front face of the hinge and then in its place, screw in the tripod adapter. From there, you can simply attach the tripod adapter onto your tripod head. Also worth mentioning here is the gap in between the two barrels is sufficient enough to accept most standard tripod adapters. You know, occasionally you'll find binoculars where the gap in between the barrels is quite narrow and therefore you have to uh, select your tripod adapter very carefully to make sure that it will actually fit. These Alpen Teton 10x42 binoculars have an excellent focus wheel and certainly one of the better ones out there. I say this firstly because unlike many, many binoculars out there, including some alpha level ones, metal has been used and not plastic as the main material. While structurally this is probably an overkill, it just looks, feels and simply works better than your average plastic focus wheel. The wheel is also prominent, well positioned and quite large. I measured it to be 34mm in diameter and 20mm long, which I found makes it very easy to find and reach from the standard grip when holding the binocular up to your eyes. Then there is the deeply etched diamond pattern on the outer surface of the wheel that delivers an excellent level of grip. Now during normal day-to-day -day use, this is really not that important. But in winter, when you're wearing thick gloves, this, along with the other aspects that I've already mentioned, like it being very prominent, 
really helps in ensuring that you can make rapid and accurate focal adjustments. The focus mechanism on my sample was also very smooth, but also perhaps a fraction a little bit too tight. But this is very minor and I think it is preferable to it being too loose and sloppy. In terms of the gearing, it takes just over one full turn, about 450 degrees, to adjust the focus from one extreme to the other. This is what I would describe as quite an aggressive gearing mechanism, making it nice and quick to make large focal adjustments, but it is technically a little bit more difficult to make fine adjustments. However, having said that, I never really experienced any major issue in this regard. And then lastly, I'd just like to quickly mention, whilst I like the Alpen stamped faceplate on the rear of the wheel, for me, it is just a little bit of a shame that they decided to use plastic and not metal as they have done with the rest of the wheel. Matching the focus wheel, the diopter adjustment ring is also made from metal with the same diamond pattern etched into it. This is not really necessary, but it looks great and I certainly prefer it over the many plastic ones out there. For those who don't know, the diopter is used to calibrate the binocular to match the particular vision in your eyes. I have a link in the description that takes you through to an article on the BBR website that goes through in detail how you should do this. But for now, it's important to understand that you only really need to do this very infrequently. And thus, a good diopter, in my opinion, should remain at your desired setting without any chance of being moved by accident. Some high-end binoculars will have a lockable diopter. And whilst these are not lockable, I will say that the diopter ring on my sample has a tight mechanism and is fairly inconspicuous, and thus it is unlikely to move too easily by accident. I measured the 42mm lenses to be set back about 8mm in from the ends of each of the barrels. This is reasonably deep, and thus they are reasonably well protected from things like dust, rain, or indeed when you put the binoculars down, uh, face down onto a, a, a surface like a table. Sometimes perhaps there would be um, something on that table like a stone or some gravel or some dirt. And if the lenses are actually too close to the ends of the barrels, you can sometimes scratch them. Then on top of that, because they act a little bit like a lens hood you sometimes see on expensive cameras, it also helps prevent things like lens flare from occurring in certain light conditions. As you would expect at this level, but it is always good just to confirm, I'd just like to say that these Alpen Teton binoculars are sealed and thus they are fully waterproof and not just weather protected as you will sometimes see advertised. Now even though you may not be planning on going out in wet weather, or indeed you're nowhere near a body of water that you may accidentally drop your binoculars into, the fact that they are fully waterproof is really important. Firstly, the fact that the manufacturers have gone to the expense of adding these special seals to the binocular is a definite sign of quality. Then, on top of that, even in dry conditions, these seals will protect things from small particles like dust from getting inside the binocular, which can also end up ruining the view. Then on top of that, having a fully sealed binocular has enabled the manufacturer to take out all the air from within inside the binocular and replace it with a dry nitrogen gas. This completely moistureless gas prevents any condensation from forming on the internal lens surfaces. This protects the binocular from fogging, which can and often does occur when you move from one extreme temperature to another. So for example, on a cold winter's morning, when you move from your warm house out into the open. As Alpen Optics does not supply any information in regards to the makeup and or the arrangement of the lenses and the eyepieces, I can't really comment. What I can say is, the outer ocular lens has a diameter of 20 millimeters, which I have to say is a little less than the largest ones that I've measured on a 42 millimeter binocular. For more on this and the potential advantages, be sure to take a look at my article on ocular lens sizes in binoculars. As always, the link is in the description. Whilst it's difficult to be sure, it looks to me that the eyepiece housings as well as the eye cup housings on these Alpen Teton binoculars are made from metal and not plastic, which is now sadly quite often the case. The padded section of the eye cup is attached very firmly, and even though it is made from a thin, quite hard rubber, I found it to be no less comfortable than what I would consider to be normal. A definite highlight for me of these binoculars is the twist up mechanism of the eye cups, which is truly excellent. With no free play or looseness whatsoever, there really is a noticeable feel of quality to the whole system. And I especially love the way that they very positively snap into each of the three click stops. 
Indeed, the only slight reservation I have in terms of the eyepieces and the eye cups on these binoculars is the 15 millimeters of eye relief. This is not bad, but it does fall a little short of what I would consider to be long eye relief. And thus, if you need or want to wear eyeglasses or sunglasses whilst you're using your binoculars, this may be a slight issue. I did check this by using my glasses and by fully twisting down the eye cups, I was able to take in the full image without any tunneling effect or black rings forming on the edges of the view. But it was close and I did not have much room for maneuver. Thus, if you wear thick frame glasses, I would suggest taking a look at the 8x42 version, which comes with an improved 17.3 millimeters eye relief, which should be more than enough. For more information on this, be sure to check out my complete guide on how to use binoculars with glasses. Once again, and as always, the link is in the description. These Alpen Teton 10x42 binoculars come supplied with the usual mix of accessories. This includes a carry case, neck strap, lens covers, cleaning cloth, and instructions. On top of all this, you also get a special lens cleaning pen, which is great to see. In general, the stitching and overall quality of the carry case looks good and whilst the amount and thickness of the internal padding is minimal, it has a semi-rigid design and does provide what I feel is an adequate level of protection. The material used on the interior is nice and soft and on the inside of the bag there's also a couple of extra pockets that makes a great place to keep a cleaning cloth and perhaps some other useful small items when out in the field. One issue I had was due to these Tetons being a little longer than your average 10 by 42. It meant that it was a little bit difficult to fit them in the bag without having to twist down the eye cups. Which leads me to believe that even though it has the Alpen logo printed on it, this case is somewhat generic and certainly not designed specifically for these exact binoculars, which for me is a little bit of a shame. I really like the neck strap that comes included with these Alpen binoculars. Whilst yes, I could argue it's a little on the thin side and perhaps not quite as deeply padded as I would have liked for what is essentially a fairly heavy 42mm binocular. But having said that, I never had an issue in terms of comfort. I like the fact that the underside of the padded section looks to me to be made from a neoprene type of rubber, which is left uncovered. And thus it adds an extra layer of grip, which does a great job of preventing the strap from sliding about around your neck and shoulders as you're walking about. The upper surface is covered with a fine material, the stitching looks excellent and the strap is branded with the Alpen logo. Attaching the thin nylon section of the strap to the binocular is achieved in the normal way and they have a slider which enables you to adjust the length of the strap. This tried and tested method works well enough but can be a little time consuming to set up and then remove should you wish. However, the great news here is Alpen have added a couple of quick release clips to these sections this means that once set up, you can easily and very quickly remove the padded neck section. You can then connect the two clips to form a hand strap, or they can be used to attach the binocular to some sort of harness. This is another small but excellent attention to detail that I really appreciate. I really like the way the objective lens cover is designed to fit into the ends of the barrels and not over them, which is often the case on others. This makes for a far more integrated look and thus they feel like they are a part of the overall package rather than just being an afterthought thrown in at the end. Also important to mention is that the cover fits very well and as a result should not come away too easily by accident. For me, the only slight shame is that it is not tethered to the body of the binocular in some way, which would negate the need to either store it somewhere when glassing or attach it to the neck strap through the loop on the hole on the side. As well as a really good quality microfiber cleaning cloth, that is fine for cleaning the body, as well as perhaps lightly cleaning the lenses when out in the field. Alpen also includes a special lens cleaning pen, which is excellent. On the one side of the pen, you get a retractable brush, which you use first to lightly uh, get rid of any sort of debris. Then on the other side is a cleaning tip. For more information on how to properly care for and clean your lenses on your binoculars, be sure to check out the link in the description that will take you through to an in-depth article on the BBR website. Right, okay, so there you have it. I do hope that this... Whoa! I can see everyone shouting at the screen right now. Jason, you've included no information whatsoever as what it's like when you pick up the binoculars and look through them. What's the image quality like? 
you know, what is the quality of the glass that they've used? Things like coatings, none of that information is on this video. And yes, I 100% agree with you. I haven't included it here. A number of reasons for this. Firstly, I think if I were to do so, this video would just carry on for ages and ages. And trust me, no one wants to listen to me ramble on for that length of time. And then secondly, and probably the main reason, well, one of the main reasons is uh, things like comparison tables, where I, I make a table up comparing these binoculars to other summer binoculars, you know, within their price range, within other slightly lower or higher price ranges, things like that, and go through all the features and compare them against each other. Things like that just don't really come across very well on a video format. So, and obviously I do include those in the full review link down below. So, you know, I encourage you, if this video and the, the outer um, components and, and features on this binocular have piqued your interest and you are interested in this binocular or a binocular similar to it, check out that link and go through to the BBR website um, for all that information, which I do include. So other than that, I just want to say, well, if hopefully that makes sense and I, I do hope that you understand the reasons why. Um, I'm going to leave the video here for now so it doesn't actually carry on forever and ever. And I will see you guys again next time. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers for now.